some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Now, my voice may sound a bit off because I am definitely recovering from something. I don't know what it is, but... I am recovering, but at any rate, I've got a double feature for you today. Uh, the first one is a new anti-auditor channel that goes by the name of Bat Borat. Then we're going to take a look at uh, Morris Sovtard, who believes that he is uh, royalty and uh, is above the law. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Wait a second, wait a second, slow down right quick. Uh, is this true? Is this uh, possible? Uh, did Goat Boy actually try this? Okay, uh, okay, I'll give it a quick listen. I mean, uh, Goat Boy's been talking about starting a new anti auditor channel because. Well, uh, he's just that bad shit insane, so let's give a little bit of a listen, because if it is him, well, you don't want to use more than a few seconds of his video, otherwise, otherwise he'll come hunt you down and, uh, well, give you a stern talking to about how much of a assessor you are. So let's give a little bit of a listen. I'm a bat, and I sound like Borat. I am a bat, spit crazy. I know a crazy when I see one. It takes one to know one. I can't wait to sink these fangs into these blood-sucking parasites. Bat Borat is an evil bat, but even these criminals cannot sink no lower. Let's look at a Liberty Troll recently been earning the hate by going into a wig office, which is not for men, videotaping women and children. So let's just listen to a few more seconds of uh, another random piece of this video and make sure before uh, we just dispose of this garbage. Uh, so let's roll that beautiful bean footage, shall we? I hear fat bastards say that that security guard threatened to shoot him. But, clearly, the security guard said that if he had to pull out his gun, that he would actually use it. That, to me, is not a threat that he would shoot him for filming, like Georgia Transparency, Big Coward, say. Yeah, all that cringe is definitely shady. Uh, that's definitely Goat Boy. Uh, so I'll tell you what, uh, if you really want to watch the whole thing in its entirety, I'll leave a link in the description and you can bask in the cringe of, uh, well, his attempt to be an anti-auditor. I mean, yeah, it is definitely something to behold. Well, I already knew what this was. I just wanted to see if I could out-cringe the cringe master audit them. Uh, I don't know if I succeeded or not, but uh, do I care? No. You just count out cringe, that idiot. Now let's proceed on to the uh, Moorish Sovtard who thinks he's actual royalty from the Moorish kingdom. Mr. Evans has indicated that he'd like to represent himself on this matter and have our office's standby. I think the court granted that motion, but set this hearing to today because Mr. Evans indicated that he sent a letter to the court that had some uh, requests in it. I don't know if, it, if the court received it and if, if a copy was provided to the city. I have not seen it. I have not seen it. I looked in the court file earlier today and it was not there. Um, Madam Clerk, do you know if we've received it? I don't know why you guys haven't received it. Uh, also, can I ask that uh, this hearing is on record and that everything is being documented by a court reporter, please? We do not have a court reporter. We're creating an oral um, recording, though. Okay, so it, it, will it be on record and will, uh, yes. it, will it be able to be reviewed by federal judges if 
it gets to that or whatnot. Now, keep in mind that this special person has, uh, well, sued courts and corporations and everything like that. So he's pretty much familiar with that at the very least. But if he has ever won uh, a case, probably not. I mean, who knows? If he has actually won a federal case, I haven't heard anything about it. Okay, uh, I can read a copy of the letter. I've mailed the letter out. There's no reason it shouldn't have reached you, but the letter had very personal and sensitive information regarding my sovereignty as a uh, chief of a sovereign tribe that's federally and internationally recognized. Uh, I don't know why that letter didn't make it to you. I mailed it out last Tuesday, so it should have definitely gotten to you guys by now. Um, I'm having issues with uh, getting uh to the law library i've been in the whole hey you need to fix your english it's a law library not law library i mean come on now dude if you're going to be claiming to be of a royal descent then you need to be educated and you need to learn proper english i mean otherwise you're just going to make yourself look like a complete imbecile but you don't exactly need help with that i mean you I already made it clear that you are a complete imbecile and you will continue to make yourself look like a complete imbecile throughout this uh, hearing. Um, it's like almost impossible for me to legally defend myself with the conditions within the jail. Uh, one thing I would like to ask, especially being that you didn't get that letter and I invoke my rights as a sovereign uh, tribe, uh, chief of a sovereign tribe, that uh, if possible, you can give me a PR bond so I can properly uh, get everything to you uh, and make sure it's filed in the courts. I assure you, being that I invoke my rights as a sovereign tribal mm -hmm. chief, that I will appear at court dates. I won't play with my rights like that. I have too much to lose. Um, and I have a leg injury. Um, but the main thing is my legal part um, and the getting the proper defense, and then the mail that I'm mailing out, it's not even getting to you. So I'm, I know I'm going to have an issue defending myself from the inside of this jail. If you could do that for me, I humbly, respectfully ask that you give me a PR bond so I can at least properly defend myself, especially that I invoke my rights as a tribal chief. Hey, you're more soft hard. Do you see this guy on the screen right here? Uh, he is the current king of Morocco. He is King Mohammed the Sixth, and he is actual royalty. Uh, unlike you, he doesn't need to go about uh saying that he has sovereignty and everything like that. He has proof of that. You, on the other hand, uh, are a pretender uh, trying to act like you're somebody who they're not and uh, trying to get benefits uh, out of every system that you can get without contributing to it. You know what we, we call that? We call that a parasite. Yeah, at this moment, you're just nothing more than a parasite to the United States. Um, I believe we've already had multiple bail hearings. I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, you were saying? I was just going to say that there was a letter that was faxed in that we received yesterday, um, and I just forwarded it to all parties. Okay, thank you. I'm going to take a moment to look at that then. I didn't see the, it in the file. In addition to that, I introduced evidence that will exonerate me. M Mr. Evans, I can't read it and listen to you at the same time. I'm sorry, Yana. Also, sir, I can't, I can't read and listen at the same time. I, I read slowly. Sorry. Okay, I've read your letter. Um, you've already had at least one bail hearing. Cause I remember it. Um, I have not heard any change in circumstances such that I'm, you're not entitled to a second bail argument. Um, bail remains as, as previously set, five hundred dollars per per charge. What char What tribe are you um, enrolled in? Uh, all of that, I don't. I want. I don't want to uh, reveal that information because it, because it's private. I uh, invoked. That's why I invoked also the peace and free friendship treaty between the United States and Morocco, in which I do qualify for that. And also, you can contact the uh, Embassy of Morocco. Oh my goodness, dude! Uh, first of all, uh, your tribe name could be of relevance to this case. It may help you out. But seeing as how you are unwilling to uh, give the name of your tribe, I really think that uh, 
you don't have a tribe. And then there's the issue of uh, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Uh, have you ever read the Treaty of Peace and Friendship uh, between Morocco and the United States? Uh, yeah, it's mostly a trade agreement, you moron. It has nothing to do with your uh, status as a Moroccan citizen or anything like that. It is an agreement between the two countries to treat each other fairly on the high seas. Nothing more, nothing less. It is not the end all be all of what you Moors think it is. No, so I'm I'm familiar with that treaty and it is a it is a trade treaty. It has nothing to do with your right to commit crimes anywhere you feel like. No, no, ma'am. It has nothing to do with me committing crimes, but they will vouch that I am royalty and Morocco uh has granted me as part of their royalty and they will vouch for me i assure you you can't be a royalty in morocco and a native american that that's that's not possible okay okay uh you say you're part of the moroccan royal family uh let me ask you something does this guy right here look like uh He's related to you in any way, shape, or form. I mean, and not to mention that if you were actually part of that family, I am sure that they could spare a few couple thousand dollars to bail you out. Not to mention give you a good proper defense, but uh, hey, you may be the black sheep of the family for all we know. They may not like you. That may be why you're here in the United States uh Trying to live on the dole. But that would be a stretch right there. I doubt that the uh, royal family of Morocco would abandon one of their own like that. I assure, if you look at the evidence that I submitted, I assure you I am. I, I received saying, no, no evidence. I, I received just your letter. Um, right. So I'm the, not going to, the, I'm, the not letter, gonna grant, I'm not going to grant your motion to dismiss. Okay. What are we doing? Okay. And the, I, I, I submitted evidence in the letter. Uh, I, I, I'm not denying, I'm not granting a motion to, to dismiss. I understand, but I submitted evidence in the letter as well. I, 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 I've considered your letter and I'm not granting your motion to dismiss. I understand. Okay, what are we doing? What about the evidence? What do you want me to do with the evidence? I, I don't have any actual evidence. I have your statements. Right, I submitted evidence in the letter. If you read it, you'll see that I submitted a civil case as evidence. You submitted, a, a, you told you, you mentioned a civil case. I don't see the civil case. I have no access to this case. I submitted civil case 24012 out of St. James Parish, Louisiana as evidence that will exonerate me. And in addition to that, it will prove everything that I'm saying to be true. I don't me. have that case, sir, is what I'm telling you. All I have is your letter. Right. In the letter, I'm su I submitted civil case 24012. Out sir, of sir, I don't have that case in front of me. I don't know what's in it. I have no access to it. All you I have, have you is... You have to retrieve it. I, I have no way to do that. You that's have to contact your job. the courts. Sir, that's your job. You, this is your case. You represent yourself. It's your job to put your case together. It is not the court's job. Yeah, dude, that's not... The court's job, that is your job to have the proper citations uh, on that document to uh, present what you are trying, what point you're trying to make, how it relates to you, and everything else like that. If you're unable to do that, then, well, you don't have a, a good case, or you just might not know how to uh, present a case very well. I mean, that could be it as well. I'm willing to go with that one right there. I mean, it, it seems like you're not the, exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer and uh, not able to put together a uh, coherent uh, legal argument to begin with, as we shall continue to see throughout this video as well. I cannot, I, I, I ethically cannot do investigation on my own. No, I'm not asking you to do an investigation. Bullshit! Bullshit! You are, you're asking me to go retrieve something. That's an investigation. No. I submitted civil case 24012 out of St. James Parish, Louisiana as evidence that will exonerate me. Then you have to actually get that case and put it before the court. It's impossible for me to do that within inside jail. 
you have a standby counsel, perhaps you can talk to him about it. Are you going to be able to retrieve that case for him? One second. And your honor, I, I can make the records request. I don't know if it's going to have any, yeah, uh, any lot receiving it. I mean, based on the information that I have, okay. the case has a seal on it, and uh, you're going to have to get permission from the Chief Justice Roberts to get the seal broken. I don't understand what the U.S. Supreme Court has to do with a Louisiana state case. Because it 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 holds my rights. As my constitutional rights and privileges as a chief of a federally and internationally recognized tribal chief, in which I represent a sovereign state. Okay, so what are we doing today? Uh, in according to the letter, if you're not going to dismiss it, I ask that uh, in the letter I requested that you file a motion of discovery. You're so dumb. You are really dumb, for real. Wow. Wow. That's uh, what you did. What now? You uh, submitted to uh, the court that the judge uh, filed the motion of discovery. Uh, dude, as the defendant, that's pretty much on you. You can't ask the judge to do uh, your uh, defense for you. I mean, that is well would be unethical uh, at the very least. Uh, I can't file any motions. I am not. I'm not an attorney. I don't represent you. I don't represent the city. That is not my rule. Okay, and you said you're not dismissing due to lack of evidence. Correct. I have read the police reports and, and do, did find probable cause to detain. And some of these cases are in review status. They've already been resolved and found guilty. Okay. And also in those review cases, I would I said if the review... Uh, sir, sir, I'd really like to focus on what we're doing today. I've denied your motion. We need to move on. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what are we doing today? What's the plan going forward? Uh, the plan going forward, I would like a fast and speedy trial by jury. I would like uh, a motion for discovery to be filed. I would like a motion to suppress. Sir, you represent yourself. You have to file those motions. Nobody, that's, that's, the, you asked to represent yourself. You've got, um, Judge Rose Aikens granted that. So it's up to you to file those motions. Okay, I just received the paperwork from uh, Mr. Iannetti today on the format format to file those motions. So I'll have those motions mailed out uh, tonight. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're setting this for trial is what I'm hearing. By jury. Okay, so only the pretrial cases are going to be set for trial. I see the, the pretrial order has all the case numbers on it. Or does it have only the pretrial oh, one? Okay. I, I just clicked on it to give him an example of a, of that order as well. No, I think you've got all the right ones on here. Right. One five. Um, and I also okay. ask that that letter be sealed due to the fact it has sensitive information on there regarding me. And you my have to family. file a motion to seal it, sir. I, I'm sorry, I, I but this is why it's best not to represent yourself if you don't know criminal procedure. Um, there's a whole oh. process. There's a whole process to having something sealed. I have to make certain findings. Um, I don't have that motion in front of me. Okay, I, I requested it in the letter, but I'll file a motion as well. Okay. Um, but I'd encourage you to read the Bone Club case so that you can understand what the the guidelines are for sealing. I haven't received any of the that information and also I need access to the law library which is like they don't I don't have any access to the law library well now that may be part of your problem I mean they may not know that you're talking about the law library as opposed to a law library I mean uh, there is a difference right there a library has books and everything like that and a library uh, well is a, some sort of berry I believe but if you're having trouble with English, maybe you can work on your Spanish. Maybe that'd be a bit easier for you. In that particular case, you could always say, Donde esta la biblioteca de Reche? But then again, you may want to stick with English. I mean, you may get the Spanish translation wrong as well. That's something you'll have to talk to Square about. Um, so has any discovery been provided? 
I gave him the narrative. Police reports, that's it. Um, will the city, first of all, is there a motion to join and consolidate these cases for trial? Yes. Any objection, Mr. Evans? Yes, I do have an objection. So then you realize there'll be, it'll take roughly four months to try these cases. Will I be sitting in jail the entire four months or is it 60 days still? Um, the problem is we can't try, if you're not going to agree to try them simultaneously, I can't guarantee you they'll all be tried within, we only do jury trials one week out of the month. But my question is, will I have to sit in jail four months or 60 days? Um, potentially four months. I can't, I can't rule that out. And I'm not trying to pressure you into agreeing. I'm just setting out the facts. You do what you want to do. I just explained what joinder means and the, the benefits and disadvantages of joinder. So Mr. Evans, what do you want to do? I want to do them all separately. Okay. We'll set them. Here's what I'm going to do. suggest then. Uh, I'll put this out to you guys. Do you tell me what you want to do? Um, set them all um, in the June term. And then whichever one goes, goes. But we'll have them all set so that um, it'll depend on who's available and such. Okay. But they are not joined that that unless somebody files a motion, I actually hear it. But um, as of now, nothing is joined. Okay. Yes, Sean. So the readiness hearing will be on June 12th. Sit out here. Um, and jury trial beginning the week of June 24th. And we'll have a hearing on admissibility on, on a, we'll have a three five hearing. That's hearing that's a, a hearing about any statements you may have made, Mr. Evans, um, and a hearing on admissibility of any 911. I don't know whether there is or not, but just in, in an abundance of caution. Will you be filing any motions to suppress under three under um, rule 3.6? I'll be filing motions to suppress and subpoena. Um, are there additional witnesses you'll be calling? Uh, yes, ma'am. I would like to subpoena the uh, airport director or the operations airport so they can I can have those guys verify that, that I was there. Uh, the reason I was there is legal airport business. Um, Ms. Tenwaller is including SeaTac airport operations sufficient to put the city on notice of who the defendant will be calling? No. Okay. What would you accept? I, I don't know how to put this because I don't yeah. think Mr. Evans it, knows who this is right now. I believe the owner the, of the defendant airport. if he wishes to identify and subpoena that individual or individuals. Okay, so as soon as you figure out who it is, you have to put the city on notice. Lance Little, the managing director of the airport. Okay. T-Tech Airport Managing Director Lance Little. I've included that. Got it. Um, will you be offering any affirmative defenses? Is that a question to me or the- Yes, it is. It is. What's your question again? I'm sorry. Um, are there any affirmative defenses? Could you reword that, please? Um, perhaps Mr. Ainati can help. Yes, one second. Yes, ma'am, I do. I will be providing an affirmative uh, defense and the right that I was a law-abiding citizen at the airport. So I think that's general denial. That's not an affirmative defense. Well, I don't, also that I was a, a passenger of a business that operates legally in the airport of a charter bus company that legally operate. I was a customer of a, a charter bus company that legally operates in the airport. So, so still that's just general denial. That's saying I didn't do it. Not an affirmative defense is saying you did it, but there was a read that you were allowed to do it. Right. I was at the airport and the reason right. why. So, I, so, I, sir, that is, that is general denial. That is saying there was no crime that was committed. That's what you're saying, right? That you did not commit any crime. No, I'm saying that I was a customer of the airport. That's still a general denial. That's not an aff affirmative defense. 
you moron. In the case of an affirmative offense, an example would be that if a, a liquor store was robbed and uh, you were identified, well, you could say you were at this location at the, that particular time and use that. Then you've got to provide the evidence of where you were at at that particular time, and then the burden of proof sure shifts to the prosecution to prove that you were there and uh, everything like that. Uh, so far, you're just uh, spouting off word salad that just makes absolutely no sense. Correct. It's not an affirmative defense. An affirmative defense would be saying, I trespassed, but I had to because I was being chased by someone and I ran into the airport for safety. It was necessity is an affirmative defense. Okay. Um, lawful use of force is a defense. In that Just case, saying I didn't do it, I was allowed to be there is not an affirmative defense. It's a defense. I'm not saying that it's not a defense. I'm just saying it's not technically an affirmative defense such that you have to put the city on notice. Okay, it's according to your definition, your definition, uh, I guess it's not an affirmative defense, but once again, could they close the door so I can make sure I'm hearing uh, 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 can I re-verify that everything is being recorded and that everything's on file? And I would also like that the uh, a court reporter be present for all future hearings and possibly for this one as well, if possible. Um, we will not have a court reporter. We are not required to. We are not um, a superior court. Um, we, we don't have a budget for that. Uh, we record everything. Everything is recorded. But we do not have a court reporter. We do not have access to a court reporter, and I'm denying that request. Yes, ma'am. And also, could I file a motion to appeal that? You have to actually file it. You can't, you, you don't need my permission to file a motion. You can just file it. I mean, a notice to appeal. I'm sorry. So I would uh, get that information from Mr. Iannetti because I don't have any access to the law library to get these motions on a uh, notice of. Uh, Sir, you have to have a basis in law to request that. I don't I can't imagine. An, I, we are not courts of record in that sense, like a superior court. We do not have court reporters. I understand, but I feel my constitutional rights are being violated. Um, so we have a, there is a, a, a recording of everything. Everything can be recorded and transcribed, but we don't have a, a real time court reporter. Okay. What's the difference? Uh, I'm ready, Your Honor. Okay. Um, and it looked to me like current, what is current speedy in custody, Ms. Chen Waller, do you know? 719. Thank you. All right, Mr. Evans, bail remains $500 each case. We'll see you back here, each count rather. We'll see you back here on June 12th at 11 o'clock in the morning. Stay in touch with your, with Mr. Ainati, he can help you. Ms. Judge, Your Honor, uh, my, my bail was raised. Is there any explanation for my bail being raised? Some of my cases was $250. It went from $250. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I, I mean, I just said that I changed it right now. I, I see that. It Am was I, changed I, previous by the previous judge. It was raised to 500. She went just off the notion of what the lawyer said, which was inaccurate. And then the inaccuracy was passed on to you as well. And then you were about to redouble down on it. All right. Thank you for pointing that out, sir. I'm, re I'm restoring bail to $500 per case. You mean two hundred and fifty dollars for some of the cases, and well, it's two hundred and fifty per count on cases that have two charges. All right, mm -hmm. let me let me take a look at the paperwork I got, and I'll let you know what you want. Said two hundred and fifty dollar bail. Yes, Your Honor, I believe that and, the last uh, hearing that it was pro tem judge, and she said it at five hundred per charge, and I think she misunderstood that. When Ms. Chen Muller advised her, it was supposed to be 500 per case. Correct. Okay, for a case ending in uh, 2319, that was $250 bail. No, uh, see, there are two counts. Look look down below it. There are, two case, there are two counts. There's one count of criminal trespass in the first degree and one count of making a false statement. Both of them are 250 It's one case. Okay, so the, the, you combine the two charges 
and it comes up to 500. I got Correct. It. Correct. So it's 500 per case, but I'm restoring it to that. I, I believe there was a Scribner's error in the last order. Um, to, and I thank you for correcting me, Mr. Evans, or pointing that out. Um, so it is now, um, so on the case, and similarly, the case ending in 525, that's the last case. Um, there are two charges on that case as well, and it's 250 each charge. Okay. So then. So was I right or wrong? You were right. I mean, I put it back the way it was, two, 500 per case. Okay, and I'll have trial for all four cases on the same day? or Okay, and I'm not. Uh, the judge has already explained this to you. There's only one week out of the month that they actually do trials while the rest of them are hearings that lead up to trials. You know, the wheels of justice move kind of slow. So, yeah, uh, you're going to have to take one trial a month. It can't exactly do all four at one time. I mean, that would be a huge mess. I mean, would you rather get them done all at once and, uh, well, screw up big time? Or would you rather do them one at a time and make sure you get everything done correctly? I mean, that would probably be the better approach, wouldn't you think? But then again, you're a, a soft heart, uh, and uh, that kind of intelligence really doesn't come by uh, you soft hearts very easily. Common sense kind of things, you know. We can't. We can't possibly do all four in one day. That's we're good, but we're not that good. Gotcha. So, uh, and also the letter that I sent you, you it's going to be on file for the public to see all the information I have in there. Um, until I receive a motion to seal and we have a hearing on it, yes. Did you read the backside of it as well? What yes. I said? Okay. But sir, so uh, this is why I'm encouraging you to look at the Bone Club case because that sets out the criteria by which a court can seal a document. It's not, I can't just seal it because I feel like it or because you want it sealed. There has to be a justification. It's a matter of national and homes, homeland security. You you can't just say that. You have to show me why it is. Because it's an investigation. So again, you can't just say things. You have to. I need the whole story, not just little bits. You and just so you're aware, we are streaming this hearing live on YouTube. Before you go any further than you want to. Right. So I'm. My whole life is in danger at this moment because of this. I clearly uh, wrote in a letter that it's a, uh, I'm connected to an investigation that's a, that is a matter of national and homeland security. But you can't just say that. You have to show me the whole thing. I can't just take your word for it that that's an issue. You're muted. You're muted. I gave you the evidence to prove what I was saying as well. But you didn't. You just said, I have this thing. You didn't. I don't have the thing. I need I the gave thing. You, I gave you the evidence in civil case 24012 out of St. James. Okay, we're, we're circling. We're, sir, sir, we're just circling back to things. You, I do not have that case in front of me. You have to present that case to the court. You can't just say there is a case. So I have to do it in a motion form or do I have to because be for me to physically get a copy of that, I would have I, it's impossible for me to do it. My lawyer uh, probably can do it, but it's impossible for me to do it from within inside. I, I understand. And we had this discussion at the beginning of the hearing and you've talked to Mr. Iannotti about that. I can't do any investigation. I am not your attorney. I'm the neutral party. I'm not I'm not the city. I'm not you. Um I, I will do no investigation. That would be, uh, uh, frankly, I could be sanctioned for doing that. Um, it's up to you to present evidence to the court. It is not the court's job to, to, to find evidence. Okay, in the letter I did present it as evidence. It, it's not evidence, it is just claims. All right, so I actually have to file an actual uh, motion as evidence and it's not the motion you have to file the evidence the thing itself you mean the actual physical copy of the civil case yes that is exactly what i mean yeah doofus you gotta show the actual case you just can't say 
this supports what I have to say, you've got to actually point it out to everybody within the case and try to support your claims using that. You just can't say this supports me when uh, it probably doesn't. You probably just quote mind it. You gotta have evidence, and that would be your evidence. But you gotta make sure that you uh, use it properly, which a lot of you softards don't ever use that kind of evidence properly. I don't have the actual uh, copies of the civil case in front of me due to the fact that I would have to call the courts to get it. And I cannot do that from inside of this jail. And they will not fax that to me from the inside of this jail. OK, so we, I, we're we having the same conversation over again. You can talk to Mr. Iannotti about this, um, but I can't. There's There's just a limit to what the court can do. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll see you back here on June 12th. Well, June 12th is just right around the corner. Uh, something tells me that he won't be able to grow a brain in time uh, to be able to mount a de successful defense in his case. Because in order to do that, he's got to drop the soft hard jargon and everything like that. And uh, we know he's not going to do that. He's got to... Uh, Get an actual lawyer who knows what they're doing because you're not going to be able to learn the law in 12 days, not to the extent to be able to uh, defend yourself. And he's got to be able to uh, let the lawyer do his job instead of uh, trying to guide him along, believing he knows better than the actual lawyer. And then he probably would uh, have a successful defense. But I don't see that happening. No, uh, the dude's pretty much screwed. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?